Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of ZooCast where we interview graduate researchers in the Department of Zoology in Cambridge and get them to talk about their research and their life in Cambridge. And this, this week I'm very happy to announce that we have Sagara with us. Hi, I'm Satya Chandra Sagar, daily known as Sagara. Um, I just finished my master's and I'm uh, a graduate researcher here in the Conservation Science Group. And I work with Dr. Fang Wanhua and Professor Andrew Bamford in the Department of Zoology. Okay, so Sagra, tell us a bit about what you do your research on. I'm studying the change in bird communities um, uh, after 10 years of restoration in lowland forest of Sumatra. And also I'm looking at the impact of bird trapping for pet trade and how it's changing their abundances. Awesome. And is that a really big threat um, in the area that you're working in? Yes. Um, through bird market service, uh, we know that bird trapping is causing a certain species extinction, but we don't, we don't know what's actually happening at the community level. So my research is focused on how in an entire community level, the bird abundance is being hammered due to bird trapping. And so, so what would you say is like the key part of your work that's really important? So the key part of my work that's important, uh, which also um, uh, what I'm trying to study is actually change the abundance. A lot of people would say that no bird trapping is not impacting the, the, the birds and we are actually cons conserving the birds, which is, which is not really correct. So what we are showing is due to bird trapping, certain species populations are going down, down yeah. so low that they're going to extinct. And uh, with this data, we can ask for better management, better action plans, uh, and also maybe increase their conservation status. Brilliant, that sounds amazing work. So who would you say your inspiration is for getting into this kind of conservation research? A lot of people have inspired me in my life, uh, especially with respect to ecology and conservation. But two people in particularly shaped my thoughts and how I work in conservation. One person is uh, Dr. George B. Schaller, and he has inspired me through his, his work across the world and particularly his books. And second person who inspired me the most is uh, my mentor, uh, D.V. Girish. Uh, he is a conservation activist and um, a naturalist, and he taught me how to look into a problem and try to solve an issue uh, with your continued passion for conservation. Okay, so Sagra, you do a lot of field work, but yes. talk us through maybe a typical day um, in the life of you in the field. A typical day in Sumatra when I was doing would start at three o'clock in the morning. We would wake up and I would tell my, uh, I'll, I'll wake my field assistant up. We would cook some rice, make some chili sambal and start, uh, start a walking at 3.34 because we have to reach our first destination, our first uh, point counts by six. Okay. So uh, but one, of the, one of the craziest day that I have had is to wake up at three o'clock, you know, prepare my lunch and my breakfast, leave our camp at four and reach a river that we have to cross four times because uh, we have to swim across the river at four o'clock in the morning oh with God. all our food, with all our uh, clothes, uh, and also with our machete so that we can, we can hack through the forest, yeah. and then walk for three kilometers to reach our first location, and do 12 point counts, and come back again in the evening, and cross the river again. Wow. Uh, and a typical day would be around maybe 16 to 18 hours of day of work. Wow. And we would walk 20 to 22 kilometers. A day? A day, yes. That's really intense. Wow, <laughs> yeah. amazing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and so what would you say the best part of your work was? So you've talked about all the, obviously yeah. the hard slog that you had to put in, yes. but what's the best part of your work? The best part about being a field conservation scientist, I think is, um, I truly believe that, that conservation is more, not just science, but more of a moral issue. So when you're, when you're out there in the field, you put your heart and soul into it and you try to know the legends, the, the, the mysteries, the species, the landscape, mm -hmm. the culture. Yeah. And I think there's something beautiful about it and it, it makes me feel happy. I think that's the best part of it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So your, your work clearly involves a lot of collaboration with other people. Can you tell me a bit about the people that you work with? I mainly work with uh, University of Cambridge Zoology Department and, and also uh, Plant Sciences Department and I collaborate a lot with University of East Anglia. Uh, but because my research is also heavily involved with conservation work, I work a lot with uh, Royal Society of Protection of Birds, RSPB, BirdLife International, 
and Burung Indonesia, which is the BirdLife International partner. And I think Cambridge is really good to do a collaborative work because presence of uh, Cambridge Conservation Initiative in David Attenborough Building, every all the different organization is just like a footstep away just to collaborate and I think it gives you a right nice place to collaborate. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so a bit more of a light-hearted question. Oh, if okay. you were an animal, which animal would you be? Ooh, I would be a tiger. I would be a tiger in in uh, in Western Ghats, particularly in Bhadra Kudremukh landscape. <laughs> yeah, uh, because I think it's the safest place in the world. Yeah. For tigers. Yeah, I think Bhadra Kudremukh <laughs> tiger landscape in Western Ghats is the safest place for tigers. Is yeah. that where you're from? It's my home, and I know because uh, a local NGO called Wildcat Sea put heart and soul into protecting that landscape, and it's just passionate people coming from different walks of the life uh, with a combined effort to save the land and I think it's the safest place. So you obviously did a lot of field work but say I gave you as much money as you wanted, yeah. where in the world would you go with it and what would you do? I think the one place that I really want to study uh, with all the money in the world if you would give me would be uh, Himalayas yeah. and Western Ghats, yes. Yeah. I think that those two are extremely unique uh, landscape and extremely high biodiversity and I think it has it has lots of things to save and yeah I think I would I would walk the entire Himalayas and try to save the entire landscape. Wow. <laughs> yes. Okay so Sagar you've just finished your masters so what yes. do you think the next step is for you in your career? So I really want to do a PhD and uh, um, as I said like I think I would want to study the systems of Himalayas and Western Ghats uh, that's I'm very keen in, in on it, and but eventually I want to get myself back to the on-ground field conservation with all the academic background that I have. So you're clearly really passionate about your work, but what do you really want your research to achieve? I really want my research to to save the birds of Southeast Asia, and I think my research will give valuable information so that we can have an evidence-based conservation action plan, and also I really want the people, particularly from Indonesia and Malaysia and Southeast Asia and all over the world to be passionate about, you know, about birds and not just trap them and keep them in the cages, but admire them in the field. Mm -hmm. And I think it should not be a tainted love, but love as it is in the nature. I mean, I mean, if I, if my study can change the, uh, change the way people look into conservation of birds, mm -hmm. I think I'll be happy with that. Yeah. Yes. So the bird trade in Southeast Asia is clearly a big problem, um, but how do you think people at home watching this might be able to help? The best thing that they should do is to talk about this, to, to not to keep this issue down, but actually up there so that people ha are having a discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the first thing to do. And second thing is, if you are, are by chance visiting Southeast Asia, either as tourists or as just as birders, I think you should make a point saying that you need to see wildlife in the wilderness, in natural areas and not as pets. Mm -hmm. And I think talking to the local local uh, people saying that this the reason why you are here is to see the nature in its complete and that includes seeing species of birds and mammals and reptiles in the wild and not in cages. I mean, making that a point uh, and spreading the awareness is very important and each and every one of us, um, you know, have the responsibility. And the third thing that we can do is to reduce the pet trade. I mean, reduce the demand of pets either in Europe or North America or even in Asia, outside Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these three things are the, thing, are the crucial things that people who are watching this can do and make a big difference. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks very much, Sagra, for coming in and talking about all your interesting research. And if you want to find out more about Sagra's really interesting research, then do go to his website. Thanks very much for watching this episode of Zoocast, and make sure you stay tuned for another episode later in the year. Um, and don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm.